Hey, what the hell's going on with you in the face? Hi. Hey, Nick DeGilio, that's me. Thank you for checking out my uh, YouTube channel. Uh, it's free. Subscribe. Uh, videos almost daily, every other day or so. And also uh, check out more content at my Patreon page, which is a great way to help out. Everything I do video-wise is DIY. Could use a little help, a little donation here and there. Keeps things going and you get bonus content and all kinds of cool extra stuff if you become a patron. Patreon.com slash Nick D Show. Pick a tier, pick a donation amount, you know, like three, six, nine, 25 bucks a month, whatever you want. You get extra bonus material, including behind the scenes radio stories that are never going to be heard to anybody but my patrons. So go to patreon.com slash Nick D Show. Donate today. My podcast is the Nick D Podcast, part of the Radio Misfits Podcast Network. Every Tuesday and Friday, new podcasts are up. That's free. Subscribe to that today. Okay. Um, I was just uh, thinking about uh, uh, three categories of film genres that I made up. Um, and I'll explain very quickly. And I would love to hear <clears throat> from you. Leave your comments here, whether it's on Patreon or whether it's on the uh, YouTube uh, channel. Or, you know, I'll share this on Facebook as well. Uh, please share your thoughts on this. I, I came up with three categories of movies that are based on Sylvester Stallone movies. And it was just kind of a coincidence that it happened. So let me explain what this means. I've talked about this. I talked about this years ago. I, I, I kind of coined these phrases years ago. Uh, and I talked about it on my, uh, on my WGN uh, show for many years. And, uh, and I wanted to see what you guys uh, out there in the YouTube land or the Patreon land or the um, uh, uh, Facebook world what your thoughts are, what movies would fall into that category for you. So the first one that I came up with is a thing that I call Nighthawking. That's when you go back and you Nighthawk a movie. Let me explain what that means. And again, these three categories I came up with are all derived from titles of, of a, a, a Sylvester Stallone movie. So the first one is, what exactly, what does it mean when you go back and you Nighthawk a movie? Well, I'll tell you what that means. That means that... Um, you nighthawk a movie when you're nighthawking. That means you're you you watch a movie that you once thought was great. That when you were younger, you thought, "Man, this movie rules," and then you watch it years later and it actually sucks. I call that nighthawking because of the Sylvester Stallone movie Nighthawks, which came out. I was 16 years old when Nighthawks came out, and I fucking loved it. I thought it was great. I thought it was one of the best movies ever. You know, when it first came on, uh, uh, you know, uh, on TV or Spectrum or whatever it is, the cable, and then cable, I watched it all the time. And then years and years and years pass, and I see that it's on cable one night, and I'm like, oh, man, Nighthawks, Nighthawks Rules, directed by Bruce Malmuth, Stallone, Billy D. Williams, Rutger Hauer. Woo! Yeah! So I'm all excited to watch it. I haven't seen it in maybe 20 years or so. So I'm like, you know, I was 16 when it came out. I'm now probably in my 30s. So it's been that long, maybe early 30s. I watch it again, and it's a piece of shit. So movies that you once loved when you were younger, that you look at now and you go, Jesus, does that suck? Now, there's a ton of them. I'm not going to go through a whole list of them. But there's a ton of them that fit into that category. And a lot of them are movies that you saw when you were a kid. And, you know, like maybe children's movies that you thought were good that actually ended up being a piece of crap. But the first, like, movie that really popped into my head was Nighthawks. Because when I was young, when I was 16, I fucking loved Nighthawks. I watched it all the time. Now, the only thing that holds up in Nighthawks is Rutger Hauer. Rutger Hauer is still great in that movie. But that movie is terrible. It's fucking ridiculous. If at any moment you would think that Sylvester Stallone could be mistaken for Lindsay uh, 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 Wagner, even from behind, then forget it. You're not going to buy any moment from it. It's terrible. The acting is terrible. Stallone is horrible in it. Um, he's got like the most ridiculous clothing. Uh, the most ridic He puts his hat like in his, you know, uh, whatever you call these things, applet or whatever they're called, in that, and he's like doing like weird. Th it's just the score is by Keith Emerson from Emerson Lake and Palmer. Um, and I remember when I was a kid, I loved the score. The score's ridiculous. Um, so, um, anyway, 
High school, loved it. Saw it at the Norwich Theater. I believe I went with my friend Scott Fricky uh, to see, and I, and I think Scott watches these videos. Scott, my man, how you doing, buddy? Uh, but I think I went with Scott Fricky, if I'm not mistaken. I think Scott and I saw Nighthawks together, and we both thought it was fucking great. Now, I don't know what Scott thinks of it now, but it's a piece of shit. So what movies have you Nighthawked? What movies did you love when you were younger, and then years later you go back and you watch them and you go, Jesus, what was I on? So, yeah, Nighthawks is the original Nighthawking movie. Ridiculous movie. Completely ridiculous. Stallone is awful in it. Um, there's a part in the movie where uh, Billy D. Williams gets like, I can't remember, he gets his face slashed or something in the movie and then like says to, he's being carted off on a, you know, on a, uh, you know, by the paramedics, he's being carted off on a, on a gurney and uh, he's like, hey man, you should have taken the shot. There's a part in the movie where Stallone should have taken a shot, and he didn't. I, whatever. Anyway, it's ridiculous. Uh, I will say this. It does have a nice use of brown sugar, which I don't know if... Because when it was on cable, they didn't get the rights to brown sugar, so they put some other song in it. But the but the um, the Rolling Stones song, Brown Sugar, is used when they're like searching for Rutger Hauer. He plays a terrorist. They're searching for Rutger Hauer. And uh, Stallone's got, like, a, a, a pencil drawing of what could be Rutger Hauer. And then he, like, erases the beard. And they go, oh, it could be him. He's standing right over there. And, uh, well, anyway, but, but I just remember really enjoying the use of brown sugar in a disco scene. Uh, I, but other than that, like, I was 16. I thought Nighthawks was the greatest movie ever made. It's a piece of shit. Okay, so that's category number one, Nighthawking. When you watch a movie when you're younger, you go back to watch it later, years later, and it's shit. What movies fall into that category for you? Okay, number two is Ramboing. This is what happens when you Rambo a movie. Now, when you Rambo a movie, it's the opposite. It's when you see a movie that when you first saw it, you fucking hated it. You thought it was shit. And then some time passes, you watch it again, and you go, oh, actually, I was wrong. This is a good movie. So that's called Ramboing because when I first saw Rambo... Back in 1985, not First Blood, because First Blood is legitimately a great movie. And and for my money, the best Stallone movie ever, the best Stallone performance ever, the first movie, First Blood, the first First Blood, Brian Dennehy, Sylvester Stallone, Richard Crenna, um, that's a legitimately good movie, like a great movie. Not great because it's campy and stupid like a lot of Stallone movies are, but it's a legitimately good movie. And then Rambo came out, which is the second one, and it was ridiculous. And it was just a, a complete piece of shit. And because I loved First Blood so much, I fucking hated Rambo. I hated that they turned him into a cartoon character. Like this really wonderful, tragic character that was created so beautifully in First Blood is now like this killing machine, rescuing everybody who had ever gone to Vietnam. It, ridiculous. So I hated Rambo when it first came out in 1985. I fucking hated it. And then years go by, and now I love Rambo. I love it. Now, for different reasons. Because, again, it's a ridiculous movie. Rambo is an absurd, stupid fucking movie. But it's entertaining as hell. The great, late, uh, the great, the late, great George P. Cosmatos directed it, who directed a bunch of uh, uh, tremendous and ridiculous action movies, including the absurdly ridiculous Cobra. He also directed Tombstone. Uh, George Cosmatos was a, was a pretty terrific, like action singular action director, and he was great. Uh, you know, he made silly movies, but they were good. But but Rambo, I hated it when it first came out, and then I loved it. So that's what I call Ramboing. When you see a movie and you hate it, and then years go by, you watch it again, and you love it, Ramboing. The other one that falls into that category, the biggest one that falls into that category for me, is Southland Tales, which was uh, Richard Kelly's follow-up to um, Donnie Darko. And, um, and I hated it when I first saw it. It's with... The Rock, and I mean, it's it's got a million people in it. It's an insane film. Um, uh, and when it first came out, I was very excited to see it because I love Donnie Darko. I love Donnie, not the director's cut, the actual first theatrical release that came out. The director's cut is horseshit, but I love Donnie Darko. And when I heard about Southland Tales, I was like, oh my god, it's like this big epic, crazy movie from the director of Donnie Darko. This guy's got a great imagination, terrific filmmaker, and I fucking hated it. Now. Granted, when I saw South, Southland Tales, 
Uh, but, but then, uh, to, to, to sum it up, I Ramboed it. Years later, not years later, about a year later, less than a year later, it was on cable. Six, seven months. It was on cable about 2 o'clock in the morning. And I turned it on and I watched it. And I loved it. Loved it. So it was one of the biggest 180s I've ever had. Saw it. When I first saw it, I hated it. Now I love it. Southland Tales is one of my favorite movies. And so that's called uh, Ramboing. But f- as far as Southland Tales goes, I will say this. The first time I saw Southland Tales... One, I saw it at the Piper's Alley Theater, which, if you've ever been to the Piper's Alley Theater when it was open, was a fucking dump. Uh, During the last, like, four years of its existence, it was one of the worst movie theaters in Chicago. Uh, Had uh, shitty theaters. They let it all go to hell. The projectionists were all drunk. It was was just a... It was a fucking dump, and it was the only place it was playing was the Piper's Alley. And sometimes Piper's Alley would get good movies exclusively. Like they had Diary of the Dead when George Romero's Diary of the Dead came out. It was exclusively playing at the shitty Piper's Alley Theater, which was a fucking dump. So, saw it at the Piper's Alley. Southland Tales, saw it at the Piper's Alley. Terrible theater. And I was extraordinarily hungover when I first saw Southland Tales. I saw it at 11 o'clock in the morning on a Friday, and I went out and got ripped the night before, and I was still hungover from the night before. So... Shitty theater, 11 in the morning, incredibly hungover, and like in a shitty mood, and then I see this crazy, weird movie, and I didn't, and I hated it. I fucking hated Southland Tales. Then, like I said, seven, eight months later, it's on cable in the middle of the night, loved it. So that's called Ramboing. Ramboing a movie is when you hated it when you first saw it, sometime later you watch it again, you go, you know what, I was wrong, it's good. So that's Ramboing. And then the third one is the most fun, and I call it Rhinestoning. This is when people, when you rhinestone a movie. This is not so much what you do, but what the filmmakers in the the studio does. Rhinestoning is when you put a couple together, uh, you know, like a sort of a romantic couple, actor and actress, who play a romantic couple who have no business being in the same movie. Like absolutely no, it's the weirdest, wrongest pairing that you could possibly make in a movie. Not only should they not be in the movie together, but they fucking certainly should not be romantic interests in the movie. So, I call that rhinestoning because, rhinestone, uh, the romantic pairing of Sylvester Stallone and Dolly Parton, where Stallone sings. Rhinestone is a notorious movie. By the way, um... It's a terrible movie, but motherfucking Ron Liebman is in it, which makes it good. But anyway, that's like the ultimate example of an actor and an actress who have no business being in the same movie and who absolutely have no business being romantic leads in the movie. They have no business being in like a romantic comedy or being paired up together. And uh, I have a couple more of these in the world of rhinestoning. But when you are rhinestoning something, it's when you're pairing up an actor and actress who should not be together. What what do you can so in, in, here's another one which just so happens to star a uh, uh, Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton was a, the romantic interest, uh, a, a, a romantic coupling in uh, Straight Talk, shot right here in Chicago about talk radio. Not accurate at all, but Straight Talk and her romantic lead in that movie, fucking James Woods. Yeah, when I think great romantic movie couple, I think. Dolly Parton and James Woods. Hey, let's get James Woods and Dolly Parton. Hey, magic wasn't magic. That's another example of rhinestoning. Uh, Another one is uh, Only the Lonely, John Candy and Ali Sheedy. That's rhinestoning. John Candy and Ali Sheedy, romantic comedy together. They're a couple. No. Uh, So so that's... And there's a million of them. There's a million. A lot of them involve much older actors and much younger actresses because you can get away with that. You know, like, that's that's okay to have, like, an actor who's, like, 60 and his romantic uh, uh, woman, you know, the lead is, like, 20. Just, you know what, here, in order to in order to, uh, to understand rhinestoning in terms of age difference, just watch any fucking Woody Allen movie, okay? Any asshole Woody Allen movie has... It's either him or someone who is a surrogate Woody Allen who is, like... 35 to 40 years older than the woman in the movie the romantic lead in the movie because Woody Allen is a fucking idiot um and and by by the way I never was on the Woody Allen uh bandwagon ever I think Woody Allen is a shitty filmmaker a terrible director who not only has like uh hang-ups like having his lead actor be 40 years older than his lead actress 
which is creepy and weird and constantly in his movies. But he's also a director with not an original fucking bone in his body. If he's not ripping off uh, uh, Bergman, if he's not ripping off Fellini, if he's not ripping off John Cassavetes, if he's not ripping off Scorsese, the man, as a filmmaker, he's a terrible filmmaker. Woody, Woody Allen is a fucking terrible filmmaker and not a very good writer and not very original and all these weird psychological hang-ups are on display in the movie. Um, and uh, this is not a commentary on whether or not he did what Mia Farrow uh, claims that he did I don't care about any of that shit. That doesn't matter to me. If he didn't do it, he didn't do it. If he did do it, he did do it. Whatever. I'm talking strictly looking at his movies. His movies suck. And one of the many, many things that Woody Allen does is he rhinestones all his movies, 90% of his movies, because he's always got men and women romantic couplings that are fucking weird that should not be together. Actors and actresses who should not be together. Um, And most of the time, that's due to the classic... Woody Allen thing of like, I'm 50, but you're 19, and we're going to be together. Okay, so that's a, that's an example of rhinestoning. Uh, and Only the Lonely is a little bit like that. But, the, but another big one is Steve Martin made a movie called Shop Girl with him and Claire Danes. That falls under the category of the Woody Allen, I'm 90, you're 20, let's fuck. Which is among the many things that make Woody Allen's movies so terrible. And he sucks. Woody Allen has made... What has he made? 500 movies? There was a period of time when he was making one, two movies a year for about 15 years straight. And he's made, I think, two really great movies, one or two good movies, a couple of okay movies, and the rest of them, and I'm talking about 50 movies, suck. Woody Allen is a derivative piece of shit filmmaker and not a very good writer, and people who call him a genius don't know what the fucking word genius means. So anyway, but rhinestoning, I got a little uh, uh, off, off, the, off the rails there because I hate Woody Allen so much. But anyway, rhinestoning, that's an example, that's another example, rhinestoning. Two people that should not be in the same movie together romantically, and I got that from the movie Rhinestone. Then there is Ramboing. That's when you go back and watch a movie that you hated when you first saw it, now you love it. And then the original one is Nighthawking. That's when you go back to watch a movie that you once loved and you realize it's shit. Because Nighthawks, I thought it was great when I was 16. It's shit. Uh, Rambo, I thought it was shit when it first came out. Actually, it's really fun and really good. Uh, on a different level than First Blood. But And then Rhinestoning, Sylvester Stallone, Dolly Parton have no business being romantically linked in a movie at all. So, bad coupling, Rhinestoning. It was once terrible, but now I like it. Ramboing. It was once great, but now it sucks. Nighthawking. So what movies have you Nighthawked? What movies have you Ramboed? And give me some examples of rhinestoning. Leave them here on your little thing here on the fucking internets. Leave it on Facebook or Patreon. And uh, leave it on, uh, on here on the YouTube. What are examples of those three categories? All inspired by Sylvester Stallone movies. Okay. Anyway, there you go. Uh, think about it. Throw, throw your comments there. I'll do a little follow-up on this. And I believe this is something that uh, Esma... And I, if you listen to my podcast, you know my partner Esmeralda Leon and I love to talk about fun stuff. I think Esmeralda and I will talk about this topic at some point on the podcast. So thanks uh, for watching. Enjoy the veal. And uh, yeah, 